My name is Shadi Daher. I am an oral surgeon. We are here today at the Implant Dentistry Center in Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, scheduled today are procedures that are pertaining to guided bone regeneration, preservation of uh, the sockets or regenerating uh, the bone uh, height in preparation uh, for the placement of an implant. If possible, we will try to place the implants at the same time. Um, otherwise, we will uh, perform a minimally invasive ridge preservation procedure. Uh, and the second case will be uncovering of an implant uh, that was placed with a ridge uh, preservation or bone grafting procedure. The treatment plan, if we may have the uh, radiograph, is for the uh, removal of the maxillary right central incisor, tooth number eight or number one one in international speak. And um, as you see on the radiograph, the uh, periapical uh, area has a significant radiolucency that extends all, right, all the way around. The uh, tooth has had a uh, root canal uh, treatment. It is now uh, mobile. Uh, there is significant amount of crowding with uh, an overlap uh, of that tooth. So both in terms of occlusion and in terms of individual dental health, this area of the mouth stands to be uh, to benefit uh, greatly from uh, an implant uh, uh, treatment. As you can see, there is a significant mobility, and we can easily, by taking a periodontal probe, uh, do two things. First, I'll show you where the bone is uh, deficient, and we have a pocket here that is uh, about 10 millimeters, and that is assuring us that we have good anesthesia. Uh, the periotome will allow us to sever whatever is left of the periodontal ligament attachment for this tooth. And we will go around all sides. We went around the mesial, now over the facial. Now we're going to the uh, distal. We'll go to the palatal now. You can easily see that the uh, palatal is a, lot, uh, a little bit tighter and that will grasp the root surface and allow us to give a, a figure of eight luxation as well as a little bit of turning and you see that there is a bit of a fractured or a missing part of the tooth and that kind of um, coincides with what the radiograph shows in terms of irregularity of the uh, surface at the distal and at the distal apical. I feel bone, but we want to make sure we get no granulation tissue. There's a significant amount of granulation tissue, of course. The patient has been premedicated with um, amoxicillin, full gram, we will now collect some of the blood. You have the option of making another incision, collecting it from um, uh, a venipuncture in the dorsum of the hand or from the antecubital fossa. But I find that collecting a little bit, especially since we did not use epinephrine, there is an abundant amount of, uh, of supply. I'll just use a little bit of blood. The, um, Synthograft should only be uh, moistened with blood, and it should be also mixed a lot to uh, break the surface tension of the mac micro and nano porosities. So using my finger on the facial, I'll go to the bottom of the socket and drag it, and the length of the defect is roughly 10 millimeters. The width of the osteotomy, or the socket, excuse me, is seven, about eight millimeters. The defect extends from one side to the other, approximately seven millimeters as well. Now we will prepare our bone graft by using a syringe. We will take the membrane. We will 
push the membrane in. If need be, you can grab it as you're uh, in inserting the bone graft. The bone graft itself goes in and starts stabilizing it in place. Take a sterilized cotton tipped applicator, pack it. It will uh, pack as well as imbibe some of the liquid. There we go. <laughs> and what I will do is take the, uh, take that, is take a suture and we will get the suture ready and then put the uh, plug over it and just cinch it down. And we will use an inverted figure of eight suture. And the trick here is not to let your uh, needle grab the membrane because then it will just pull it out. And there is no cure here. You'll then have to take it out completely. You will then have to uh, redo the graft by actually collecting it back out And when we're suctioning and there's all kinds of grafting material, we will use um, a uh, gauze over our suction. Okay. And here we are. The, uh, the uh, collagen plug gives you a little bit of uh, an agent that, uh, that allows you to, uh, to put your suture and um, kind of hold it in place. Okay. So I'm using an inverted suture because I want the knot to sit a little bit deeper in the socket to uh, press the edges of this um, membrane in and hold it even, okay, retract like that, good, and hold it even deeper. So we get the uh, needle in, and we push down, and then we turn, instead of just getting it in and turning, here we are. Now make sure that the loop and the two ends are on opposite sides. You can't cross under the loop. All right, so here we are. Sorry, yep, dab. Uh, now we will take a moment to ensure uh, hemostasis. Okay, and that's it. You will see that we have. Um, our friend who had received an implant with a, a graft that required a membrane. The implant was placed just at the floor of the sinus. Uh, we used a, a, a Bicon Ultra Short implant, avoiding any sinus um, uh, lifting. And at the same time, because this was a uh, um, a traumatic extraction previously, the facial aspect or half of the facial aspect of the ridge in the edential space was missing. So upon the placement of the implant, we were able to place a bone graft covering uh, approximately half of the implant's uh, uh, plateaus as well as the shoulder and uh, using a retention suture held all of it together. Today, we will be uh, uncovering the implant. So we will make an incision that will allow us to regenerate some of that tissue. And it's going to be right on the crest. Do you feel this at all? Uh -uh. Okay. It's going to be curvilinear. And it's going to come up to the mesial tooth. All right. Also, we will make a tangential cut so that we do not extirpate the circulation of the uh, papillary tissues coming from the periodontal ligament of the adjacent teeth. Develop the full flap here. That will allow us a couple of things. A, to show you where the graft was and for us to see how it succeeded. So if you look closely, you'll see that we have the full area here 
uh, with the graft nicely covering the implant and I see the edge of the black healing plug. There we go. Okay, so we got the plug out. Then we'll take a guide pin, insert it, okay, and we want to check integration. Place the impression post and put a suture in there. And I will take the first bite. The nice thing about the vertical mattress sutures is that they will uh, be out of the out of the way for Dr. Morgan. I will take this sleeve out. It'll just make my job a little bit easier. All right. Feel all right? Mm -hmm. Good man. All right, here we go. Good. That's it. Okay, I'll turn it over to Dr. Morgan now, who will take an impression. So, Dr. Daher has placed the impression post with its green because it's a three millimeter well and the three millimeter sleeve. And all we're gonna do is take an impression. And So we have just removed the full arch impression. We're going to use a plastic temporary stealth abutment with an acrylic sleeve. So these interproximal little wings were impinging upon the, the adjacent teeth. you can go on and we can add a composite material to it to make it look like a tooth the key is to extrude the material slowly close you see the tongue just cleared the material from the palate out of the side Open.